corn stock lodging can be more than just a hassle during harvest season, it can also noticeably impact yields. In 2003, researchers from multiple universities in the U.S. and abroad tallied the losses for farmers around the world at 5 to 20 percent each year. Now another team of researchers has found a consistency in naturally occurring lodging. Across multiple locations, hybrids, and planting densities, the group's studies show lodging commonly occurs within a few centimeters of a node. Doug Cook is part of that research team, although his background may be different than what you would expect. First, he's a mechanical engineer, and second, he's located at New York University in Abu Dhabi. Doug was in Lincoln recently and sat down with us to discuss the findings and explain how he got involved with the issue. Well, I started in, in the field of human biomechanics, so I'm a mechanical engineer and I studied at Purdue University and I was doing research in human biomechanics uh, when, I, when I had a friendship with someone at, uh, who's a plant breeder and I started learning about corn and plant breeding and we started having conversations about could the techniques from biomechanics and mechanical engineering have some impact on plants and so when I looked into the area I found there were very few people doing research of this nature and I saw an opportunity to, you know, have an impact and to make some new progress in a new field. So, What was your process to try and find out reasons behind stock lodging? Yeah, so when we asked the agronomists um, about stock lodging and we said, what are the failure modes? This is an engineering term that means uh, a description of the failure. And they, they were quite taken aback by that question. They said, what do you mean? It just falls down. <laughs> And we said, yeah, but if you look at the plant, what, how would you describe the failure? He said, we, we don't know, we've never really looked. And so we had to strip off the leaf sheath and then look at, this, look at the plant and catalog the, the nature of the failure. And then we found some really strong patterns that help us un interpret what's going on. What were the patterns? The failure tends to happen um, near a node. And that's the biggest. And then it's always the same type of failure. You can see in corn, sometimes snapping, splitting, and creasing. But the creasing is really dominant. And, and then it always happens near the node. And so that's helpful for, from an engineering perspective because that pattern means there's we could do something about it. You mentioned creasing and splitting. Is it important which one happens first or why one of these is happening rather than the other? Uh, the creasing happens first and then it sometimes causes uh, splitting as a secondary failure. And so of those two, creasing is definitely more important because it's the initiation. And we're trying to find you know what's the weakest link in this. If we can stop thing, if we can make an improve, maybe even a small improvement there could have a big improvement for strength. Essentially, you found that it's structurally deficient. The, the plant itself, is that correct? Uh, it's, it's a trade-off. So the plant uses those nodes to increase its stiffness and its strength. If you didn't have the nodes, it would be weaker. But when you add the nodes, you then have a susceptibility to fail near the nodes. So uh, you know, can we now, maybe with engineering techniques, help the plant uh, increase its strength in that region so you don't always, whenever you have a failure that's happening in a consistent place, it's because there's something consistently maybe deficient, so maybe you can increase it. Can you explain how broad your samples were? Uh, we tested, we did observational studies. We would walk the fields and look at plants and we worked with folks at Monsanto. And so we looked at many different, I think over 20 different hybrids at several different uh, environments, both in the US and Iowa and then in South Africa and we saw the same patterns everywhere. So. so what does this indicate? Where do you go from here with this research? Well, we have developed a device that we can use to measure stock strength out in the field, and we've been testing, testing that device in the fields. And this last year in 2016, working again with Monsanto, we tested over, we performed over 12,000 tests. And so we're seeing diff these different patterns, and then we can eventually hope to commercialize that device. Uh, Daniel Robertson is a guy who works in my lab, and he has the idea that farmers could use this to do risk analysis. Uh, your pl corn plants are standing in the field. They're going to dry down, and we know as the, as the longer they stand, the weaker they get. And you can see a big storm coming from the west. You know, do you harvest and pay to dry down, or do you uh, wait and hope you can weather the storm? So that might be, you know, in a few years, we might have something like that. You also used x-ray machines. Mm -hmm. uh, you were scanning stocks. Yeah. What is the importance of that? Uh, we know, as a, in mechanical engineers, we know that, that strength comes down really just to two things. What's the shape of the structure and what's its material properties? Material properties are hard to measure and they're very hard to control, but shape is pretty easy. And so we use X-rated computed tomography or ca like a CAT scan to capture the shape and then we use a computer program to automatically extract it. So we got the shape and what we found is the shape controls about 80% of the strength. 
just the shape alone. And so that was quite uh, surprising to us because a lot of work has been done on the stock composition, the chemistry of the stock. And I think the reason some of that research hasn't uh, had a lot of big results is because that's the lesser of the two aspects. I'm curious what agronomists think of this. This is an engineering perspective. Yeah. What do the agronomists say? The agronomists that we worked with are really happy to collaborate with us, and I think they're excited to see some new techniques and a new approach come into the field. Lodging, you know, lodging has been a problem for farmers for a lot of years and for uh, the breeders. They can't make an improvement until they can quantify something, and we're trying to help them put numbers on stock strength.